are all on a journey. Some of us choose the easy road and walk on flat grounds, while some of us rather climb mountains and walk on snow. Some of us are on the journey to the next destination now, so I'm very happy that a lot of you are still here at this time at 5.30 p.m. and are not making your journey to the next dinner location. So thank you very much. So when it comes to a journey, we are starting from one place and we are ending, we have a destination in mind. So similarly, every online customer that you engage with, you yourselves are online customers, you have a destination in mind and you go from one spot to the other just to fulfill whatever you're looking for, whether you're looking for a holiday destination, a trip, purchase or something, there is always a goal in mind. So like a train ride is the is the online customer journey from one destination to the other in a straight row i'm afraid not because an online customer journey is very much like a soccer match so in line with uefa champions league that's just ended can i just see who are soccer fans around here ah there you go so i'm this analogy will relate very much to you because very much the online customer is like a soccer game. You have one goal, and that goal is to get, um, to get into the goal post, right? And there are many, many players in your game. So each player is very much like a channel where the ball is the customer and they're getting from one channel to the other just to get to the final goal, which is to get your customer to book with you. However, we all know that in a soccer game, the ball doesn't travel from the goalkeeper straight into the goalpost. It actually goes one big round from player to player, very near to the goalpost, and then again it goes back to the other end of the field. So a customer is very much like that. When we are doing research on what to purchase, which hotel to stay, which is the best Nepal travel agent to do the Everest Base Camp track, we are going from point one to point two, from uh, Google search to Facebook, to look at your friend's photos. Then you go into TripAdvisor to read reviews. You go into OTAs to look at the hotels. And then you go back to Google to look some more for more information. And you're going round and round in circles. And it's never ever one straight path to a purchase or online booking. So as brands like you and I, travel agents, hotels, it's very frustrating because we can never anticipate where the customer or when they are going to book. So an example here is of a girl called Felicia. She's an example of a lady who is looking to book a Mauritius hotel. Um, Testing, testing, ah, yes. Yeah, so Felicia is looking to go on a honeymoon to Mauritius and she's doing research. And the research took her seven months before she finally make a booking for her holiday. And you can see here, this is an example of a real customer where there are 735 touch points where they get from one channel to the other, research some information, then they get distracted and they end up looking at cat videos on YouTube. And then they go back to researching about the holiday and they end up booking a business trip and then they get back to work, working on their holiday booking. So a customer is perpetually going around the channel and searching for like um, information before they make a final booking. So every single customer is so complicated and there is such a different purchase journey in each and every one of them. So there are so many customers and yet there are so many profiles. So here we have a few personas and I'm sure some of you in the audience might relate to some of them. We have all kinds of people who are, who are coming to Nepal. The budget travelers who want to find a great deal. You have your luxury travelers who wants to take helicopter rides to see Everest. Or you have your students who have no money but they want to do everything. So there are all kinds of profiles and they have different search behaviors. So how exactly can we find the right customer? 
So just pulling out some data for 2018 um, numbers from Sojourn Travel Trends. Sojourn is a, a very great platform if you're trying to find out data about travel brands trends. Okay? So if you see 2018's data, 47% of travel brands spend their money on, digi on digital. And that percentage alone, would you consider it high or low? Out of the 27%, Facebook and Instagram is getting 23% of your digital spend. So people are starting to depend a lot on Facebook and Instagram to find new customers, to try to get them to come and book with you or stay with you. So we have all these customers and all these platforms. How can you engage with them at the right time, at the right channel, and at the right country? Many, many, many ways. So the customer can find you, but there are so many different ways to be present on the online platform. So here are just a few options that you have, from search engine optimization, to email marketing, to social media, or even to YouTube videos. There are many, many ways that we go about trying to find information, and you as a brand or a hotel are trying to be present so that they can find you. And not just um, all these platforms, there are also so much competition out there with Booking.com, with Airlines, Skyscanner, Google. Everybody is fighting to get the attention of the customer. So you have to make sure you're present throughout the journey of a customer so that you are the first one on their mind when they are looking to book something. So one quick thing that any brand can do is to really understand your SEO performance online as a travel um, tour operator or hotel because if your competition is higher than you in terms of search rates for certain words, then there is something you need to work on. So, for example, if a customer is looking to go to Mount Renjani, this is the, one of the, the biggest mountains in Indonesia, when they search Mount Renjani climbing, the first article they read is like, oh, somebody has gone to the track and they click on it. So here is actually like, for example, my blog. I wrote an article about Mount Renjani uh, many years ago when I hiked it. So if you have your article or a blogger who wrote about your track with you on first page of Google, it pushes your opportunity to get a direct booking from the website much higher. So this is the power of really working with content creators and bloggers because if they are strong and they have good SEO, you get free publicity on first page of Google. So something closer to home will be Nepal. If you search Nepal hiking travel agent costs, for example, how many of them are brands? How many of them are blogs? So instead of focusing on you promoting yourself, you should be also focusing on people promoting you and appearing on page one of Google. So know your objective, know which channel that you want to reach and then find a way to measure it. Because measuring it is the most important, right? You don't want to give free trips to bloggers and at the end of the day, you don't know whether there's any benefits. Let's go deeper just into one channel, which is social media. So um, I focus a lot on social media because uh, prior to coming out full-time as a freelance digital consultant, I'm actually a hotelier for many years. So I do a lot of digital marketing and social media for the hotels that I take care of. So if we talk about social media, a lot of people use Facebook and Instagram. We discussed it. And what do they use them for? The top chart we see here, oops, sorry. What did I do? Thank you. The top one that we see here in the first row is actually targeting new audience. So we go to Facebook because we are looking for new people. We are trying to find audiences that we cannot reach if we're trying to grow the Singapore market or we're trying to grow the Hong Kong market. We are trying to reach them by doing Facebook advertising. So this is the strongest reason people use Facebook, and this is one thing that I want to focus on today. So after you decide that you want to use Facebook as a platform, you need to make sure you know how to do your audience targeting well. We can't get the whole world to come and visit you or stay with you, 
But if you know exactly who you want to target, then you can make sure that you spend every single dollar of your marketing spend to find the people who are actually going to come and stay with you. So once you, once you kind of know who you want to target, which country, what kind of people, what age group, that's when you create your ads. And this is where social media, Facebook advertising comes into play. So we, there are all kinds of Facebook ad formats out there where, where you have to experiment. Like it's me and my team, we have always been trying out different ad formats to see what works better for this brand, what works better for hotels, what works better for travel agents. So you have video ads, you have post link posts, you have carousel ads. There are, yeah, this is a carousel ad, for example. So you don't actually have to know exactly what formats they are, but you need to at least have somebody who's running your ads for you who knows what they're doing because different ads has different objectives and different outcomes. So after you run an ad, it's not the end of the world. It's not like, oh, I'm done. You actually need to do remarketing. So remarketing is basically people who have first clicked onto your post, they like your video, they commented and they tagged their boyfriend or they um, share it on their page. You want to remarket a second ad to them and with an offer or you, you have a special promotion to get them to come and book with you. So the second touch point is the most important to actually get people to come and actually consider your brand because the first time that they engage with you is purely dreaming or aspiring to go. But if you give them an offer that is very attractive, they will come. So after you have advertised, you don't want to just leave it there. You need to actually crack and read your data to see whether there's any real results. So if your hotel or your travel agent has somebody who is well-versed with social media or website, it's perfect because they can actually look at the data and, and see whether what they have done worked. However, if it's not, if you do have such a person, it's time you get somebody to help you look at this information and help to churn out the right uh, direction for your advertising. If not, you're just throwing money down your drain. And it's not just Facebook that gives you info. Google also gives you info. So go to Google Analytics, look at your data. Do you have increased traffic from a certain market? Do you have more visits on a certain page from this country that you're advertising? So there are a lot of ways to really see whether what you're doing actually works. And it is not wasted money if you know what you're doing. So on a final note, I wanted to draw an analogy with something that I've recently done, which would be the Everest Base Camp track. I came back from it three days ago, and hence today I'm wearing my hiking boots that I was wearing for the past 11 days, just to make a point that I'm in Himalayas. So, on a final note, a customer user journey experience is very much like a hike. We need to know where is our goal. We have a direction and a place to head towards. So if you have a customer that you're trying to reach or you have a booking you're trying to create, you need to know very clearly where, who and what you want. Along the way through the journey of a customer, there are many transitions, just like a hike. There is many, many bridges that you have to cross and it is from one village to the other. So if you're not careful and there is no transition, your customer will be lost because they will fall down into the river or something. Okay, so transiting from one channel to the other on an online experience is very important. Also, along the way, watch out for distractions or danger because if there's falling rock or there is cracks on the floor, you will lose the customer. So similarly, on a customer online experience, everybody around is competition. If you do not make sure you're careful to follow the customer through, your competitor will get you. So be very careful to make sure that you're always engaging with your customer all the time so that they don't fall through the cracks. And if you get everything right, you follow the customer from point one to the end, you will get to your goal. Thank you.